Hi, and welcome to the Amped EV Podcast. I am David Sickles. I am the editor for The Buzz. And I'm Jason Morgan, content director for Fleet Equipment. So Jason, last time we talked about range anxiety and I'm feeling good because today we've got a really exciting interview that I think is gonna bring my anxiety back a little bit. Yeah, we're bringing in a heavy hitter because we did talk about range anxiety. I thought who better to bring in than a charging infrastructure expert, right? Let's get the lay of the land here, get someone who knows what they're talking about, uh, which helps us out a ton Uh, and we can just pepper them with questions. (laughs) So here is Rich Moore, Global Vice President Fleet Solutions at ChargePoint. Are you ready? We're going to bring him in. I'm ready. Let's Here do we this. go. Hey, Rich. Great to have you. Thanks for joining us. Great to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, yeah. It's great to see you guys. Appreciate the uh, the invite to the podcast. So wanted to catch up with you. The last time you and I met, we were at Act Expo. Got a great walk around the booth. I'll be sure to post that again in our post notes here. But I just wanted to kind of quickly touch base and see how life has been for you in the charging infrastructure world since then. So that was kind of late August, early September. Have you seen, you know, has, has growth increased? There was a lot of energy at that show, no pun intended. What's, what's the, the buzz, so to speak, on infrastructure on your end in the past three months? Yeah, it was a great show. It was probably the first time in my in twenty years I've been there. There wasn't really any. It, you had to hunt, you had to hunt to find a diesel truck there. <laughs> oh yeah, pretty, you know, it was a turning point of uh, ACT for sure, especially for someone like me. It's been in the industry a long time. Right. Yeah, and then and really shortly after that, we we closed on the acquisition of Vericity, which is uh, based in Amsterdam, which was an electric bus telematics company that we bought. So it's been I've been really focused on bus the last six months. You know, big investments all over North America and Europe and, and e-bus um, and then fleet in general, really with still pushing forward with a ton of pilots across North America. Right. A lot of yard tractor pilots that are going on at the ports and terminals. You know, that's a type of equipment that gets to TCO pretty fast. Yep. So companies are interested in it and still a lot of anticipation of when, you know, the major OEMs are going to launch their product, you know, towards the end of this year and the first quarter of next year. So. A lot of companies preparing on on how they roll out, what do they do, you know, how do they balance this with their facilities budgets, and where does this fit into their total transportation budget? So I think I probably do 50% education and and 50% sales and sales management when I look at um, you know kind of how I spread out my time across North America and Europe. But the Vericity team, it's been a it's been an awesome acquisition. That the team really kind of culturally just fit into our company right out of the gate. And we already had a pretty good competency in, in bus charging. And with them coming on board, it's it's been unbelievable, the synergies that the two teams have had. So it's been extremely exciting since ACT. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's really great news. So, Rich, um, I've got uh, my kind of big question for you here. Are there any commonalities between the trucking world and the passenger car world when it comes to charging infrastructure? Are there any use cases where, you know, those kind of coexist together in that same space? Or do you just consider those two completely separate, different worlds? No, there's certainly some crossover. And in, in, um, I think you look at, you know, for the most part on the, the service type business where, you know, companies are doing either estimate or light repair or they're doing final mile and, and light duty vehicles, you're starting to see a lot of take home charging. So I think w- what companies have figured out is they, they just opened up a huge fuel source at employees homes, which wasn't available before. So when you look at employees, if they are able to bring home vehicles because it's a part of their work. Um, and the vehicles are light duty and they're AC charging um, overnight anyways, why not allow employees to charge them at home and reimburse them for that? So we, we've done a bunch of uh, launches over the last six months with a lot of the major FMCs across the U.S. where we're deploying EV chargers at home. They're networked into the home Wi-Fi. We, we work with the uh, company to set the reimbursement rate for those employees based on that state's energy rate. And then we give them all the reporting so they can do reimbursement. So it's made a huge impact around kind of early adoption of ev on the fleet side and you really you never really thought of home as a fleet application but it's going to be a big portion of fleet over the next couple of years we 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 anticipate that segment to grow really really fast because with the early vehicles coming out you know of course they're going to charge dc when you need them but Mm -hmm. primarily they should be charging ac because you know they're going to have eight to ten hours a night that are that are sitting idle great point 
Yeah, and that's that's really interesting. I mean, whether fleets are putting in their own infrastructure and charging there, or there's commercial applications at home. From your seat, how are utilities dealing with this? How's that conversation evolving? Are utilities playing ball with rates and understanding the basically the fuel spend that fleets are moving over, or are they just considered another customer? No, no, they've been great, and I, I haven't found a utility that that hasn't been willing to work with us um, or, um, or their customers in that in that uh, area. So every utility we have a conversation with, you know, they jump right into the conversation around what can we do around a depot to help the customer out, bring in energy to the curb if it's needed. And then they're very excited to, to roll out our, our hardware for home programs. They, they want to incentivize their customers to charge electric vehicles at home. I mean, at the end of the day, utilities are there to support their customers and sell energy. And they're going to do what it's take to make sure their customers are getting what they want. So the utilities have been great. And and I found we've had major projects that we've done with customers where, you know, utilities are out the, the next day to meet with us and consult with us with the customer on site. They, they've been fantastic. Um, you know, like any like anything, you have to plan early. You have to communicate, you know, very clearly to them on what you're trying to accomplish. And I haven't found one that that really hasn't wanted to help the customer get to their goals. It's important for the customer base to, to meet their ESG goals and their electri electrification goals. You know, ultimately, what everyone is is striving for is a you know a total cost of ownership that makes sense on these vehicles for transportation versus their traditional fuel source. So, and and the utilities know that they're a major um, contributor to that. So, so I, I couldn't be more happy than the work that they've done with us. Very cool, excellent. So, Rich, um, you know, charging trends going into twenty twenty two. I feel like charging has evolved a lot just in the past one to two years. What, what do you see, you know, coming down the pike in the next year or so? You know, certainly on the on the consumer side, it, you know, off highway access charging is 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 going to be a major focus over the next two years. And, and whether that's in a retail environment or a food service environment or what you're going to start to see around highway access is, is really going to accelerate over the next two years. I, I think everyone has seen Everything that's come out with the transportation bill and the infrastructure bill and, and where that's going and those dollars that are going to dump into the marketplace to support that. And, and really what it's about is, is creating access points that, that make sense for consumers on the consumer side. But it's also helping businesses afford to put in that fueling, you know, because they're going to get 10, 20 years out of that fueling site without switching over the hardware. Really, the, the major cost is getting the energy needed to the curb to allow customers, you know, on the fleet side to electrify. So I think that when you're going to see the dollars being spent on the consumer side, it's going to be certainly around, you know, off highway retail access, you know, where where you'd want to charge along where you're going. And then on the business side, it's, a, a you know, it's supporting them on how they electrify their fleet behind the fence and offsetting some of that hard cost up front um, to electrify their fleet. So. Very cool. Very cool. Rich Moore, Global Vice President, Fleet Solutions, ChargePoint. Rich, thanks so much for taking the time uh, here to talk with us. Always great catching up. I'm sure we'll talk to you again very soon. Yeah, great to see you guys. Have a great morning. Thank you. Take care. Whew, all right. Holy I tell you what, every time I talk with Rich, I learn like one million more things. I've got a, a slew of things. He basically laid out our next content plan for basically the year, I feel like. Yeah, I think we're, we're pretty much set. We can just run this interview a thousand times and I'll catch something new every time. <laughs> I know. I mean, the, the take-home charging was great. I mean, the, the ramifications for that. I mean, if I'm, a, if, if I'm just driving a fleet vehicle and putting infrastructure in at my home, yeah. I'm probably going to buy an EV vehicle then because yeah. why not? It's yeah, in there. You've already got the infrastructure in your home. Oh, mission Set accomplished. Up. Yeah, no, that, that's really interesting. That's something I hadn't really given that much thought to yet, but right. that's that's something that I can see really being a, a factor here. Right, right. It'll be fun to track his off-highway, it was off-highway or right off the highway charging station too as yeah. the infrastructure bill rolls out to see that development. So very cool. Yeah, 100%. I, one of my big takeaways, I think, was the, you know, he he really focused on the infrastructure more so than the vehicles themselves, right. you know, and I, I think that's a really good point that, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's that kind of charging ecosystem. It's right. the ecosystem surrounding the electric vehicles that right. is really going to make the big difference here over, you know, the actual electric vehicles. Right, right. Well, that was great. That was great. I, I guess I would say I'm amped that we got to talk with them. <laughs> got it. I got that one. I am also amped. Okay. Yes. Very amped. Well, you Two know. amped guys. Very good. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. We'll see you next time.